All right, welcome to uh, episode three of the Revo XGP Studio Show, fueled by Golf Race Fuels. We've got uh, three-time and reigning MX1 British Champion Tommy Sorrell and eight-time Dave Thorpe, eight-time British Championship. And do you say three World Championships, or do you count do you count them there? No, no, three. Three, three-time World Champion. I've Dave got Thorpe. IBF, we count the bets. I'd be counting the bets. <laughs> 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 but, um, yeah, we're at Canada Heights for round four of the British Championship. We've got the red plate at the moment, Tommy, so yeah, yeah everything's hunky dory at the moment. Yeah, no, so far so good. Um, obviously, I come out uh, swinging, which was the plan. We wanted to do that, and just it's just gone quite smoothly. So, I've really enjoyed it. I'm almost enjoying it more, like coming to a race and um, just taking it all in a little bit more than I have done in years past. And, just, yeah, I generally enjoy it. I enjoy it whilst I'm out in the race. I feel like I'm, I'm in good shape, so I'm able to think about what I'm doing while I'm racing, know where to push and where not to push. And um, yeah, as you said, so far it's gone, gone smoothly. Everything happy with your end, Dave, happy with the results that Tommy's been getting. I mean, obviously, yeah. that, you've got to win it every round so far, haven't you? Yeah, so far. So. Yeah, this, this, this season for Tommy's gone really well. Um, for the team in general, it's gone pretty good until the last few weeks. Um, obviously, Jake um, Jake's hurt himself and yeah. uh, decided to, to stop racing at the British Championship. Yeah. So that's obviously we feel for Jake, and uh, he's been a big part of the team for many yeah. years. And then little Jay, um, he broke his ribs the week before. So as a team, it's uh, last few weeks have been yeah. tough, but certainly for Tommy, it's. Um, yeah. It's in good shape this year. Yeah. I, I see it. I saw it in the winter straight away compared to the year before. Yeah. And um, I always felt that if he got a good roll of the dice, he'd be a difficult person to beat. And it's yeah, clearly. I've seen it. Um, <coughs> Fox Hills, that second race kind of. Yeah. Uh, Harry sort of won you the majority of the race and just shut the hammer down the last sort of like three or four laps of really just. Yeah. No, so just, far. Yeah. Like I said, I feel quite confident in the race, so I know even if I'm, I don't really feel much pressure ever. I quite like like the pressure. I've always been that way. So if someone's following me, I don't really, I don't mind. The same as if it comes down to the the championship, I'm always quite confident in those situations. So um, I worked hard with Kirk over the winter, and it, and it has showed. As Dave said, he saw it straight away when he watched me ride after a, a couple of months in the gym, and. Um, being that much healthier, it's almost like I worked hard years before, but with the cards I was down, I was struggling with my shoulder, I was struggling with a strange thing they had in my back, and it was just always, I was always more worried about them than I was being fit, because I was like, well, if I can get them better, that's almost more important to me. I feel like I could ride better in that way. So I was, it was hindering it, and all of a sudden, when, as Dave says, when you get a good roll of the dive, it all sort of, as a rider, it comes up. Um, naturally but I do think I've just put that little bit more in and um, I think that it does give you the edge I had a conversation with Dave before that you realise when you do more and you do get that result you know yeah. it's the little bit at the end that gives you that edge on the competition it's not you can't rely on just going oh, I'm good on a bike like I yeah. can sort of slack here um, and uh, I think it's showing so hopefully again this weekend we can come in it's a local track to me, Camden Heights, uh, where I grew up, sorry, not as, not as local now. Um, a track that I think everyone enjoys, a track that the fans come and it's always a good show at this one. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's yeah. just going smoothly. <laughs> I had a little dive back through my laps. Um, I couldn't quite go as far back as you know, as deep. I don't know if they have my laps there or not, but... Last <laughs> um, year went 4-3 for third. Uh, didn't do it in 2020, obviously, because COVID. 2019, you went 2 2 for second. Yeah. Uh, 18, 5 7 for sixth. Uh, 17, I think you might have been doing. Uh, was that what you did with Bob? No, I uh, hurt my knee. I was injured. Uh, you was injured then. Uh, 16, you went 9 1 for second. Yeah, uh, I remember that. I hurt my knee. Yeah, then I think after that, um, you were sort of uh, GP of America. Yeah. Um, I had to go back to 2005 to find a 1 1, which was uh, 20 months. Here? Yeah. Yeah, that's strange results actually. Um, I always really like this track. Yeah. Uh, I think the results, I was actually really fast a lot of the years. That 9-1, I, I crashed a big one in the first race. Um, come back, was way last. Um, but I like it, so 
I think last year I was alright, but I was struggling a lot last year with different things in this round. Um, but really confident coming in, really generally yeah. looking forward to it, as I do every race at the minute. I, it's been a long time since I, people always say, and they're like, oh, I look forward to racing, I can't wait to race, but it's sometimes it's not been like that for me. It's not like I've never been eager to get on the tracks, and this year I generally come to the race and I was, I'm like, what, excited to race this weekend, you know, like, yeah. So I don't know, something's a bit different. Whilst I'm in the race, I can think about the race. Yeah. So it doesn't like scare me racing. I just think, well, you're fit, you're strong. You ride how you feel comfortable, and if yeah. you're, and you can make the difference. Yeah, like you kind of. I think maybe when Dave raced as well, it's not you don't look forward to. You, there's some years where you don't look forward to racing. You're a bit like, oh, another race, and then there's other years like I feel quite now quite comfortable racing's. I've raced more this year than I have probably now than I even did last year. One week I've done, I think, four races in eight days. And if you, last year, I would have just said, no way, like, I can't do that. Whereas yeah. now I am um, racing. Yeah. It feels like another day practicing. Do you think it's just obviously because you said you had such a good winter training? Like, you know, you can confidently race that for 30 yeah. minutes, 35 minutes. You haven't got to sort of pace yourself like you there. If you've got to, you can go, you can do the full. Go flat out yeah. for, for the I think, motor. I think that is a big part of it, yeah. Um, and now I feel confident. Yeah, I feel more confident in my body, stronger. Um, I feel good at the end of the races, um, and I'm enjoying it. I, I like the bike. You know, the bike's been so so good, and it's nice coming to races with the team. So it's just one of the at the minute. It just it's just nice to come to a race. I, I yeah. enjoy it all. What is that? It's obviously you said before we sort of went live that the uh, British race used to be four plus two. Um, did you was there ever like any pace in yourself back then on five hundreds or was it just absolutely wide open? You just went as long as you could go and where you ended up is where you ended up. A little bit like Tommy said, really. You know, there's days when um, you think you can walk on water and you've got loads yeah. and loads of energy and you don't even consider the time. And there's other times when not even got the halfway and you're thinking yeah this is a <laughs> long race the last yeah, last just, right now. just how, how it is and you know when I the first race the the British Championship when I was uh, 16 stroke 70 uh, my first round was at Hawkstone and I was just a young kid that just like twist the throttle in those days and yeah. I survived on youth really because my yeah. fitness was minimal um, as a youngster um, but yeah, I think the, the longer races, you know, they're a thing of the past now. It's uh, it's about the shorter races, and, and probably the younger generation can twist the throttle for longer. Yeah. Do you think obviously GPs now are thirty plus two? I think aren't they? Do you think it would you sort of see more of a divide at the GP level if they went back to the like forty five minute races? Or do you probably. think everyone would just everyone safe, fit, and strong now on top of it? Training. I think maybe in the sand races maybe there'd be a little bit more of a, a yeah. longer divide at the end. But the majority of tracks, I think people that win would still win and mm. the people that are second would yeah. still be second. I don't think it would change too no. much. What about, um, I've watched a couple of ages, races, GPs, and some, like sort of some of the tracks, they they obviously they didn't worry about sort of rotating it or in it. It was just rock hard, dusty. But you're watching it and it made for like really good racing. Do you think obviously the GPs now is is kind of prepped, so they're all prepped kind of the same, they rotate it, they rip it, and it ends up sort of rutting out most tracks rut up kind of the same nowadays, but you end up just sort of a lot of this following the leader and you don't really get that close racing like you do when it's blue groove and you've got to use a bit of front control and a bit more old school. Yeah, I kind of I roll with the times really, I tend yeah. not to look back and you, you very rarely see a track that's blue groove now in any no. any of the big races. Even in the UK, you know our tracks are immaculately prepared before yeah. we get here. Everybody makes a big effort. You know, Tommy um, when he practices in the week, he likes to go to tracks that are prepped nice and watered and groomed and like like he's going to find at the weekend. Yeah. Um, so I kind of never look back because my time was a different time. Yeah. Now you know there's a lot more to consider. Certainly, a lot more jumps. The tracks are a lot more jumpy, so a lot yeah. of the faces need to be prepped. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's different yeah. different you're times. Not, uh, yeah, you're not uphill to school 
both ways kind of yeah. guy. Yeah, no, no. I mean, it's uh, it's how it is, and yeah. I mean, we've had some great races this year. Tommy and Harry have had some yeah. brilliant races together. Um, yeah, we'd probably all like to see a little bit more passing, but I think you know they're they're both sometimes evenly matched and. Uh, yeah. It's, it's kind of, if you watch it from my side, it's like sometimes a little bit of game of chess. Yeah. One backs off, lets the other one catch, and then as Tommy did at Fox Hill, he just twists the throttle and he goes away, and yeah. it's just part of modern day racing, really. What about, how do you sort of feel that the GP track perhaps might have changed even from sort of when you started doing them in, uh, was it 05 the first GP or 07? Yeah, um, Obviously tracks sort of like Bulgaria and Spain, even back then they were like super hard pack. Um, but now they obviously use that new Spanish trap that's sort of a bit more fluffy. Yeah. Um, it, there is a big change even from then, obviously. I'm just a lot less the era is different to Dave's era, but from when I started in, say, what was that? 20, so 17 years ago, I raced my first GP. Um, but the tracks wasn't half as rutty. There was always a couple of ruts. Yeah. Um, like tracks like Fermo, Fienza. Um, and the racing was good. and but yeah, it wasn't half as right it was now. So I um, think kind of made it not so much better, but like sort of different, know, different types of passes. Like you was easy yeah, to square people up. The Italian race, I think they used to prep them and they used to water them. I think I just I don't think they used to rip them quite as much no. as they like they did because they was always prepped. It wasn't like you just turn up yeah. and they did water. There was it was never dusty, but the, it was quite blue groove, um, especially say Fienza. Yeah. That was that was always quite hard, but now it almost it still goes rock hard. But the ruts are their ruts are this right. deep by yeah. the time it goes rock hard. So then you're riding the ruts that are rock hard. Yeah. So then the riders don't push. Always the inside one ends up pretty fast, and everyone's so good now, it's so technical in those conditions. Now um, it ends up a little bit follow the leader because you don't really want to take a risk and, and slide yeah. out. So they're just so set. In Set in stone the lines, but it definitely has changed. Even um, yeah, if I look back, it's it's changed. Uh, yeah. Even the British Fair Championships, the, the way the prep has. Yeah. Um, some tracks don't. Some tracks are similar. I guess this is still similar to what it's always been. Yeah. What about obviously um, at the end of 2010, um, 2009, end of 2009, you went to America. Yeah. How how was the track prep sort of different uh, when you went out to your out for your first national compared to? Going back to the first GP. Um, well, my first national different? was in at the beginning of 2009 or May 2009, and that was at Glen Helen. Yeah. So, did you race Glen Helen? Yeah. Um, that that track prep was good, real deep, but also got quite poly, got quite sketchy. Yeah. Probably the same when you raced. Did yeah. they rip it back then or not? Yeah, they did. Um, that was I actually someone reposted it a couple of uh, weeks ago, um, but. Then I think it was almost a little bit different with the Nationals. Hangtown was a little bit more harder packed, it wasn't like real Rick D. Yeah. Um, you raced there as well, yeah. No, no, no. Um, Glen Helen was deep but real sketchy. Um, sort of similar ground to Parlour but bigger hills. Um, and then na the Nationals were, each track was a little bit more different to what it was now. Like, the best one from memory was Redbud, uh, sorry, yeah, Redbud. Yeah. And then you have Bud's Green. Um, but they were, there was a little bit of mixture, but not so much different. No. But I still think GPs now, you still got like Czech Republic. Yeah, there's still obviously a lot of old school tracks. Um, is there any sort of track that you would like to see come back into the GP just because it's <coughs> just a good, good track? I think like Bayern uh, in Switzerland was a cracking track. Yeah. Um, Woden in Switzerland was a great track. Um, I think. There's not many people out there, old or young, that wouldn't like to see Grand Prix Motocross back at the moment. No. You know, I think that's a really iconic track. Um, it's, yeah, the, the thought process about the venues has changed a lot from yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. the commercial side now, but I think the purists would like to see a few races out. Imagine go back to Farley yeah. for a Grand Prix, see right. Tim and the top guys, to you know, to see the top guys never race done. there. Never done it, have you? No, never been. Get to the British, no, no. Yeah, it would be, 
It'd be nice to see the, the modern day people at an old school track. Yeah. I'm sure it'll draw the crowds as well. Oh, yeah. definitely. Yeah. I just think, um, just by my personal opinion, when they go to like one of the older tracks, it just seems to create better racing. I don't know if that's just people being biased against them. I think, the, I think the bikes a little bit nowadays to cut tracks up different because I've seen them videos on people like when Tom Church and that they go race their 125 two strokes and yeah when they go to tracks and the racing's just they don't prepare the tracks like a grass field yeah. and you all of a sudden you go they're all going everywhere again on the bikes yeah. but if a 450 went to that same grass field you're still going to get that big big yeah. inside rut and then yeah. we could we don't have to you can go inside on a 450 because you never need to gain speed. No. Going outside gives you no advantage because the bikes pick up that fast. Yeah. Whereas, a, I guess, a, the older bikes, I didn't race, but I guess if you went outside, it gives you you slingshot back. Yeah, but the same, same token, that little short inside line, the bikes picked up quick on the big bike. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. But it's, uh, yeah, that kind of, what Tommy says is the, the modern day bike certainly makes the track develop in a different way than it did maybe 20 years ago, yeah. 25 years ago. I think the suspension is obviously a lot better nowadays. The bikes are so good. The tracks. Yeah. I think that's why tracks. people are closer as well. Yeah. I generally do. I yeah. think the bikes are that good that back then the bikes weren't as good, so a good rider would have made a big difference, whereas now everyone's on good bikes. A GP, if someone if someone gets a 20th place start, they finish 18th. If someone gets a whole shot, a rider can finish 4th. Yeah. It's not because... It's because the bikes are that good, you can just follow someone. Did you, you raced the war, didn't you? Yeah, yeah you I think I even had my first ever GP, my first ever race win, I think, was at the moment. Yeah, I was going to say, I thought it was I wasn't. I, I, didn't, I didn't win the overall, I got third. But I Did they do the ever. road in that year or not? That, that bit down the road? No, no it's not like yeah. Yeah, they'd done it, but it was had mud on top. Oh, okay. I didn't have mud on top when you no, did it. I did at the end, but uh, not, not in the beginning. Yeah. yeah. I think I watched the video, it was just down the road and it was just a massive yeah. single in the end. Yeah. I went in 2006 and crashed in qualifying, hit a tree, knocked myself out, and then 2007, I've done terrible day Saturday. I remember walking the track with Billy McKenzie, won his qualifying on Saturday, and I was like way down. And then Sunday, I got a good start. Caroli crashed, crashed I think, in the first turn. Yeah. Maybe Rat Trey crashed in the first turn and I sort of got away and then just yeah. ended up winning. But, yeah. Well, that, that was unreal, the race. If you ever rode a 500 or not? No, never one. Fan, never, do you fancy uh, yeah, it? Yeah, I always or? fancy it. It's nothing like It's just, it's just finding one that's at the time. Yeah. Where'd you ride it? I'm sure wobbly to find you one somewhere yeah. at some point. No, I will. I will 100% do it. I, it's a nice video for me to do. I'll probably do it this year at some point, but someone can do it and then I go riding. When you um, when you went to America obviously you were right before you left you were riding for a factory KTM. Yeah. Were were you supposed to ride for a factory when you went to the States or uh, was it always you were always gonna go to sort of like the No, they didn't have a factory then it was MDK KTM. Yeah. Um, which was quite a big team, they had a few like like three other teammates, four if you include Justin Brayton. Um, and that was but the bikes were good that year. Um, yeah. and then I got a little bit unlucky because the economy hit, the uh, whatever happened with the economy, it all dropped in it. Um, and then KTM wanted me out of my contract, so yeah. there was a bit of a kerfuffle there with it all. And then I, they ended up running the team because we said, well, we've got a contract, we've run a team. So they ran a team, but it wasn't really a factory team. They had it a little bit, they scaled it down. They got a lessee in for outdoors. Yeah on that Jägermeister and I was sort of FMF KTM that yeah. year and we just had a small team like a truck driver, my mechanic and um, Leighton was my yeah. engine guy. Um, real small team but still we had a good buy. Yeah. But, um, it was the year after that that the cost had come in and they revamped yeah. everything there but we sort of got not the yeah the short end of the straw really moving there at that time. If yeah. I'd gone a couple of years later you'd have gone into like a proper do you have any other offers from anyone in the States, obviously, because obviously you could go to the same club as uh, Tyler, and um, he went to did anyone else? Yeah, well Tyler was out of contract, but I signed early to go to an uh, with okay. KTM, yeah. because Kurt Nickel was there at the time. Um, Kurt had just moved out there, I think, and I was quite doing quite well, and then Kurt wanted like an English rider, yeah. um, and he was quite good, I, it was nice to have him as a team, man. 
manager, but then Kerr then left, and then yeah, it was sort of it wasn't as good when he left in the first year. But um, it was just I didn't have offers, no, because at the time I didn't look because I signed a couple of years before. Yeah, right. I did have an offer when my contract they were trying to stop the contract. I could have rode for Suzuki for one year, but how yeah. it ended up then falling. I stayed with KTM and they ran a team. If they hadn't the ran a team, I could have gone to, yeah. Yeah. Um, but how it all fell, they ran a the team. Um, that was still good though. I, still, I really enjoyed my time there. Um, yeah. The second year didn't go. Okay. I won the first moto of the year. Oh, no, sorry. I <coughs> got second the first yeah, moto of the year yeah. to Corsell. Yeah. And then I hurt my shoulder, which I hurt a supercross and I had to sit four rounds out. So, um, and then I ended up coming back. Did you, did you ever fancy going to the States doing a bit of Supercross or the Nationals or just uh, didn't ever take your fancy? Not really. I kind of, in my time, um, HRC had a distinctive European setup yeah. and a US setup. There was never any talk of the Americans coming to race the yeah. series and us, vice versa. Um, so it was kind of never on our radar at all. No, not even a bit of Supercross. I don't know if my dad said he went over to do GPs and they, he got asked if he wanted to do a couple of super crosses and he didn't really fancy it. But we but used to go to Japan and uh, the nearest I got to the super cross track was watching David Bailey and Johnny O'Mara and that was yeah. enough for me. <laughs> but um, what that Japanese super well, no, every testing. track we went to when we tested, we were testing outdoors, but they'd also have a supercross track there yeah. and they would sort of in their lunch break go off and play on that and I used to go and watch. You never fancy playing on it? No, no, and uh, I remember... They weren't as like they were now though, Supercross tracks, was they? Were they still pretty big? I don't know, big? it looked big to me. Um, <laughs> I suppose big on their bikes. Yeah, and I remember David Bailey coming in once off his bike and he said, can I have a go on yours? I said, yeah, you fill your boots. And he went round and he made it look so easy and I said to my boss at the time, Steve Whiteland, I said, that's the fastest my top of my bike will ever go around a Supercross track. <laughs> Why, just not better you? No, no, I didn't like it. I looked at the jumps and I thought, no, but yeah. there was USGPs then, wasn't there? Yeah, yeah, we used to race at Carlsbad, which was a proper blue, yeah. blue groove track, you know, and um, we went to Hollister Hills, where you said, one year, but um, Supercross never really came on the horizon for me. No. So do you used to go to Japan quite often to test a bit? Uh, some years we went, yeah. yeah, depending on what was going on, what was coming, what we were testing, um, and how the, uh, the next season was evolving, but yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's a great experience, I have to yeah. say. I love Japan, it's such an amazing yeah. place. Yeah, I was lucky enough to go once in yeah. Yeah, I do Did you like ever it. do the GP in Japan? Uh, two, I've done yeah. 2006 and 2007. Is that the year Billy won it? Or yeah, won he won one of them. Yeah. He might have won. He, he, won, he normally won there, didn't yeah, he? Yeah. 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 Three Somebody GPs said. wins and yeah. it was all in Japan. Yeah. Yeah. I think they made that been. track after him, haven't they? Yeah. 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 I don't know. Yeah, they probably was all super. Yeah, yeah. I think they were. That yeah. was quite hard back when they were looked quite hard. Yeah, back they ripped it standing. quite up. They ripped it up a fair bit. It was like lonely when I went. I think it rained. It was real rainy one time, and then I, I went twice. So yeah, I think I got a podium one year. Then. It's the second year maybe. South Africa was really good and yeah, there was hippos in the river at the bottom, that was cool, um, 2008, that, that was really, and then you had Sin City, you remember when they done that? Yeah. Is that the track where Everest did the fish bump? Everest done the fish bump and then So that was nice because there was a big water park there at the top so we stayed in like hotels and it was just a fun place yeah. to be rather than the track. Um, and both those, the, the other South African one, I went on a safari with Dad after raced and then Monday morning me and dad just went because he would come then because I was only like 17 so yeah. we'd go over with dad he, we went on a safari so those it's nice to go to places where you can do stuff isn't it? yeah not just go to the truck they just go to the truck a lot of places now so 
we've travelled so many places around the world and then you just go to a track and back. But even Thailand, that was quite good. When I used to go to Qatar, Thailand, I like that nice trip away. Yeah. I'd do like a full week. Well, um, obviously, it sounds like you sort of flew to a lot of the GPs by the sounds of it when you were testing in Japan. And, um, like speaking to my dad, obviously not being from the factory on the rider, he's got some like pretty mad stories about driving to GPs and things like that. Is that anything that, like you ever experienced anything like that, or obviously you're multiple? Winner, was it kind of, you kind yeah. of stayed away from the riffraff. Well, no, it wouldn't be riffraff. I mean, when I was first started, I drove a lot, yeah. and flew a bit, but in later years, I flew most of the time. Um, but mostly because I kind of like being at home, quite yeah. a homeboy, really. Um, so if there was ever a flight out on a Sunday night, I'd always get it. Yeah. And I'd always leave last minute on a Friday. So, yeah, not because of any other reason, then I just like to be at home. Just like being there, yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Well, um, I was trying to bring it back to, to Canada Heights. Do you, is this, obviously, you must have raced here quite a bit. My first race here when I was 16 years old, so f- almost 44 years ago. Yeah. And there's a story. They, uh, I turned up and uh, I did the junior race, and I was still very young. And in those days, you used to have an all comers race at the end. Oh, right, yeah. And then the, jun- the top three juniors could go in the all-comers race with the experts. And uh, Dennis Slythe, who was a, a member of the Sid Cup club in those days, yeah. quite a character. Um, that was slippery sandals. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, um, the club were not keen for me to ride in it, because I, I was so young. I'd just come out of the AMCA. Yeah. And uh, reluctantly, they let me ride. Um, Sammy brought a few strings. Uh, yeah, I, d- I did the race and I won, yeah, which was great for me. Well. Yeah, but it was great because you know before I got here, Sid Cup and Canada Heights had a lot of history. You know, you yeah. go right back to Big Eastwood's days yeah. and before, um, and the track was so much longer then. Where we are over this side, it used to come right across in the trees over this yeah. side of the road as well. Um, so I've got great memories here as a youngster coming yeah. here on my little red rocket. And bombing round, and then well, they always used to have a race here. It eventually evolved into the first or second round of the British Championship. It used to be called yeah. the Early Birds Race. Right. And um, whether it was a big race at the beginning of the season or the first championship, it used to roll like that. So, yeah, I used to look forward to it. It always used to be a lot more sandy here. Yeah. But I guess over the years where it's graded and graded and graded, it's sort of gone down a little bit. So it's a little bit more hard packed. Yeah. in certain places, but as a youngster I just remember it having far more sand on it. I had a little rip around a minute ago and it felt pretty deep. Yeah, yeah no, it looks good. Yeah, they've on. done well. Yeah. I mean, the thing, when you come to Canada Heights, the one thing you have with Sid Cup, you know, they always have a great committee, yeah. and you never come here thinking someone's not really bothered. No, you no, know, they really always not. make a big effort here. When you drive in, you can kind of see the effort they've made yeah. for the presentation, you look at the track, the track's always great. Yeah, it always draws in a pretty good crowd. Yeah, well. yeah. Yes, I think it's like, probably one of the biggest every year. Yeah, this times. one and Blacksall, they kind of tend to get really good crowds, don't they? It's not yeah. that we get good weather as well. Yeah. 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 yeah, it does always seem to be really nice, like, quite always rain or something on Saturday, but when yeah. it's racing, yeah. it always seems to be I think it, sunny. Sunday, I make for, for a really good racing. I think the, yeah. the weather looks good tomorrow. They, you know, they're still prepping it now with water and that, so yeah, I think it'll be amazing. Yeah, I had I used to race East Kent International here every year. You must have done that. Um, it used to be in like May, and it was the biggest race of my year. So I remember cleaning my bikes myself, like putting different stickers on. And um, we the kids used to race on the grass as you pull in the paddock because the autos couldn't go on there. So the autos would race around that field, um, and the big bikes would be up here, but. Canada Heights International, I remember Kevin Strybos being here once, um, a massive camper and he was like the super, he was only on an 85, um, but yeah, I remember there was talks, Kevin Strybos had come over for this like, Canada Heights International, East Kent. I've got a feeling I might have watched that, I yeah. might have come here and watched it. Yeah. Really? With yeah. Strybos? Yeah, because I just Parked remember. Parked on that road, just on the left, I, you probably won't remember, for some reason because it was that, I know where he was parked his camper. It's weird what you remember and like yeah. some random things you remember. But yeah, the kids used to race the kids used to race around the bottom as you come in on the left. There's like one big tree in the middle, we used to, it was grass 
full grass, they just taped out and you race around the grass. Um, but it used to be massive. We used to get here on like Thursday morning in the, in the car park, <laughs> mum and dad. Full of ratters. And uh, all we used to do is ride BMX in the winds all weekend and um, get told off all weekend. The kids, or the town I get off the BMX is. Yeah, so I've been coming here a long time. Yeah. Obviously, you have now three times world champion or a few things about but um, you were pretty damn bad at football as well, weren't you, at one point? Did you get off the professional contract? A long time ago, when I was a kid, I played a lot of football. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, I went with trials with QPR at the same time as Honda UK uh, made me an offer to do the NCA. Yeah. So there was a little time in my life where did I want to pursue football or did I want to pursue the bikes and yeah. that's kind of what I went with the bike route obviously. Obviously. Happy with the choice? Yeah. Yeah definitely. He likes money so he probably have more money if he's even even more money. I, I like I like bikes. <laughs> I mean, you know, my dad always said to me when I was a kid growing up, Dave you'll do well at this if you work hard because you like riding bikes. Yeah. And it's true, you know, even now at fifty nine I love to ride me yeah. Off road bike, I love to go on the road bike. Anything with two wheels, I'm quite happy. Yeah. Um, You're on a kickabout still? Or? Uh, not really, I play a little bit with my daughter. Yeah. Um, but that's it. Yeah. Even in the top corner. <laughs> <laughs> what, did you ever do anything else besides bikes? Or uh, no, really, not like really. I'm not, like not, or not, um, no, not good at anything else, really. <laughs> just, just used to ride BMX in the garden. We had a bit of like three acres we lived on, so we'd just play some of the BMXs with my brothers. He's um, a vlogger, isn't he? He's yeah, a vlogger. Yeah, vlogger. Oh, I'm vlogging now. Yeah. I'm a YouTuber and I'm like 50 50 now. <laughs> it's just been building up <laughs> to this point. YouTuber slash Mac. In my bio, it says YouTuber and then a bit of Mac across there. <laughs> um, yeah. But no, I was never good at anything. Because I, I was good at Mac across as a kid, um, I someone paid for me to do a road race tryout thing yeah. um, and tried to get me into road race but I wasn't in, I just loved riding motocross when my dad would come back from work I was in my gear and we had a little track in the garden mum wouldn't let me ride till dad got home from work so I'd come home from school be sat waiting as soon as I could see his drive I'd just go straight up the track dad would get out of his car to come and watch me so um, it was strange because my dad never was into bikes so uh, he never raced he never had any idea about motocross we didn't yeah. know it was a you could do it as a job or a career, if there was any career in it um, until we was way later down the line. So it was just strange how it happened, but purely for the love of it. Why? Did so you ever watch like sort of GPs or anything before? No, sort of got into no it, I just did uh, Jake's video the other day. I never watched a GP. The first GP I went to, I I raced. Um, yeah. It was just strange, but. So you never really was like a no, fan of any work in particular? We're just a fan of it. racing. Yeah. Used to like Carl Nunn because I used to practice at Milton Hall and I knew that he, would, he yeah. raced at Milton Hall. I think it was the year he probably he rode for Dave because he was on the camp uh, Honda in Axo gear. I was doing a training day with Stuart and Carl was doing a bit of riding. He was jumping the big jumps and I was just sat there. And, so Carl Nunn was like, just because I, I, knew, I knew him to watch yeah. and I didn't watch GPs. Um, but no, not really a. F yeah. As I got older, you couldn't follow it like you can follow it no, now, if you know what I mean? Um, I was a kid, I wasn't worried about magazines. I'd get a TMX to see if I could get like a right up in yeah, the top race. Like, yeah, mum and dad would see like you just your results at the bottom, like, oh, yeah. the TMX. Um, so different now, the kids can watch everything. Yeah. Couldn't really. I know, mean, not that long ago, but you couldn't, there wasn't, I don't think there was YouTube as such to watch yeah, all the videos. I, so, I yeah. remember watching, like, looking at Racer X when we got the internet, found out that Racer X had loads of videos. Um, yeah. Going through their archives of videos. Um, but yeah, just not, I wasn't really a fan of the sport, I just loved riding. And yeah. dad was, you ask my dad now, he still doesn't know um, riders and things, he gets yeah. mixed up. He's, he was never a fan of the sport, he just, yeah. like, watching me race really. Did you go to watch GPs or anything obviously before you were at that level? Like the first GP or? Yeah, when I was little. Um, yeah. Yeah my, was your, my, my dad guy? Well my dad used to, we used to get up about like four half four in the morning, um, get there before anyone was on the gate so we didn't have to pay to get in. <laughs> um, and then in those days as well you had to pay 
they don't pay, but they used to shut the paddock off. Oh, right, yeah. yeah. So um, we used to get there early, so I could have a walk around the paddock and look at the bikes, and then when they shut it off, we used to sheepishly walk out. Um, but yeah, I mean, you used to watch Joel Robert, Sylvain Gibbard, so you used to go and watch the 250 a lot, because it yeah. was um, generally a ladies' mile down by Portsmouth. So that was quite near my parents' house, yeah. and my dad used to take me there to watch. And as a youngster, I mean, I was like probably six or seven. Um, he used to drop me off, we used to get in, and then he'd say, right, I'll see you back here at half four, and I used to wander off. And, you know, it was a completely different world then. You wouldn't yeah, let yeah. your young six, seven, eight-year-old wander around a Grand Prix track now. Yeah, yeah, it's just a different world, isn't it? Yeah. Obviously, you've got a little one now. Um, how, how has that kind of affected you? Sort of racing wise or is it not really no honestly I don't it hasn't really affected me at all when I don't think about it when I'm on the track no. um, it's just, just quite like nice to come be quite nice to come in from the track and yeah. then seeing whether you I don't beat myself up as much about a bad weekend as I used to yeah um, but I also think it's just where I'm at in my career that my whole life doesn't depend on my weekend result as such when you five years ago I was always fighting for the to my job as such, yeah. whereas if it's stopped now, the same I'm the same person. Yeah. Um, like you come, I came from a first or a fifth, and they're still just as happy. Yeah, not just <laughs> as happy because yeah. I still put a lot of effort in, and I enjoy doing well now, um, yeah. and I enjoy being at the race, and I'm going to put my best. I'm healthy, so I put my best effort in. Um, but I think away from the track. It just makes you that little bit more relaxed, I suppose, a little bit happier. Um, but nothing on track. I don't. It's not like oh, I'm doing it. Like I don't think I'm doing it for healthy. Like when I'm on the track. I no, just, it's not. Yeah, not. It's yeah. Just I race my bike, and if I feel good on a day, you you ride better. And if you, it doesn't it doesn't change. I mean, some people say I do it for the kids, or uh, it doesn't, I don't feel that. I just I race my bike because I like racing bikes, and that. Yeah. He's there when I come in. Lovely. Yeah, yeah, I think it's definitely, it's just nice, I think. I mean, I've just had a little one not a long oh, ago, yeah. and you sort of, you come in if you've had a bad race, but they're still happy to see you, whether yeah. you win or finish 10th, like, it yeah, just kind of it. takes a bit of, like, oh, it's not the end of the world. It does, but I'm sort of different, I need to put almost a bit of pressure on myself. Yeah. I think even last year, I was like, too, like, oh, it's all right, let's go race, um, and even I speak to Sophie about it the other week, I need to, um, get in the zone a bit. I think Dave probably sees that a little bit from the past years. I'm better when I do put a bit of pressure yeah. on, like, you do this, like, put my yeah. earphones in, I've been putting my music back in like I did when I raced GPs. Um, trying to trying to put a bit of focus onto it and G yeah. myself up because yeah, it's... Like got a, got a yeah, like it's... I perform better under that, yeah. that circumstance than just walk through the pits, get on my bike, I can be a little bit too relaxed and yeah. I do need to um, pump myself up at a little bit more like I used to when I was um, racing GPs, just, yeah. I think that's, I was speaking to someone the other day and they said, oh, but the more relaxed you are the better you ride and sometimes I don't think everyone's yeah, the same true. in that way. No, I think some people obviously thrive under the, the pressure situation, yeah, others, pressure others, others sort of prefer Sort of yeah, I don't really like the pressure in the week. I like to come and everyone be happy. I don't like to have, um, well, not like I don't like to have enemies on the track. I just think the less ag you can get in, the better it is when you get older. But at the same time, if there is, like my best years are when I raced Jeffrey and it brought out the best yeah. in me. And when I do have that rival, it, it does bring out the best in me. Yeah. But um, just for easy sake, I just, but I like to just keep everyone happy. And um, but I do need that. I perform better under that a little bit. Yeah. Put my headphones in, have a bit of space, G myself up yeah. rather than just have a go lucky something. Sort of yeah, I mean, everyone's different, aren't they? So, mm. what? Um, one last thing, sort of. Obviously, your, your career is sort of obviously not over, but it's sort of tailing off maybe towards like not quite where you were at GP level. Um, when you do eventually sort of hang up the boots, how do you sort of want the, the fans to remember Tommy Searle? don't know really just a good youtuber and yeah um, <laughs> good content yeah uh, I don't know really I'm just I am at the tail end of my career I, I really want to race I mean last year I was like might be my last year this year but I'm enjoying it that much that I 
think I can quite, um, I feel like the healthiest I've been in probably three years. Um, so I, I want to race next year. Um, just waiting for Dave to get his check look out. Yeah. Um, um, on the end. Yeah, the kind of norms <laughs> now. Um, but I, d I don't really mind how people remember me. I just like yeah. just had a go. Obviously, I done well at GPs, and then I struggled at GPs. It's just just how most people's careers go. You can't yeah. always end up on the top. Um, no. and always win. It's. Um, I think uh, a lot of people like they've watched this sport from ten plus years. Sort of remember Jeffrey. Yeah. Jeffrey years. I mean, it's a long time ago. Yeah. Now, like, like you kind of got the whole nation to hate. <laughs> yeah, one person, think, which um, is fairly impressive. Which is what was that? So I was 23, 22, so yeah, it's 20. So you think of a kid now that's 13, 14, they was like four years old, yeah, got no, I, no idea. So, and I, I generally have seen that, like, not going back to YouTube, but the young kids now know me from that, but they don't have any idea of, um, yeah. of, uh, what I raced at GP yeah, they like don't seven, even know yeah. I raced GPs yeah. which you is ever strange put, you, you ever put like Matt and 25 on for an Alfie like, no, no yeah. well I do sometimes if I need a bit of picking up I'll watch an old race where I've done well um, but no it's um, I don't mind how big memory I'm just hopefully I've got another couple of years in, in British Championships which 100% next year I'll be here racing um, yeah. and then yeah just I don't know just is what it is I just remember me the ones that was at Matty, I think that's probably my best ever race I've ever had. Yeah. The way the championship was at the time, I even remember Dave that weekend. I didn't speak to Dave a lot, but it sticks in my head. I bumped into him in the parking, camping just up the top on Friday. Um, you probably won't remember, but it was like Dave thought well, I probably not spoke to you before, and it was the first time I think I spoke to you, so I just remember the spot I was in up in the camping on Friday night. Um, so that was a big race for me just because of how the fight was and I was almost out of the title at that point he, he'd got too many points I had a couple of bike problems um, so to get that win meant a lot in those having a bit yeah. of rivalry especially the home, home country and yeah just the way it all fell it just fell at a good time and yeah so the, the ones even now I see like when people write posts on Dave like you'll see a thing and there's so many people that write I was at Farley this year and yeah hero he come through and it was the best day of my life and they, I still see people write that on post now yeah and um look a few people have I've seen it when I posted a little bit and they wrote it on the one from Matterley so it's just nice that a couple of people can say I was only eight that day and I come and it yeah just one, the other day I changed my life I was struggling and after that weekend I got a bike and something like that's yeah. just no matter how many times you see it well not that I see it that but it does mean a lot that race in Farley, one of your best races for you? Is that one of yeah, one yeah, it's one of them. You know, I, yeah, I don't, there's a few that stick to mind, but yeah, it would be. And I think what Tommy's saying is, you know, the the generations of people as we evolve, yeah. you know, they when they're a youngster sitting on the fence and they remember a great race at a British Grand Prix with a British rider, it tends to really stick in yeah. people's minds. Yeah, definitely. and you know, I think it's no different than my time that you know the kids that were watching then or in their teens, you know, it's a race that will always stick in their mind. Yeah, I thought well, you were like, my old man was like in a lot of your races, but yeah. even he used to love it when you, <laughs> when you won. Yeah, yeah, so, it's, um, yeah. I think it's, it, it's cool the sort of effect you have on a lot of people that sort of remember those races that sort of, obviously the races you, you've enjoyed the most, there's a lot of races that other people still, still talk about yeah. and stuff, it's pretty mad, yeah. I think. That, yeah, like I've seen it on the post from when I just see like Motorhead put up a thing. You just see the comments, and they're older people. Who yeah. See them. yeah. Watch Dave, and they're like, best day of my life. I remember that. They remember their whole day will be, they remember that yeah, moment. Yeah. Just like, so a yeah. few people said that about Matt and that's, yeah. gives me like, you just think, wow. Yeah. And sometimes you don't even hit, they don't tell you it, and then when you write it, like one bloke said, he was struggling with this and that, and then his dad says, "Right, let's do this, and it'll help you." And he and, I, and he was like, it "Changed my life from that." Something mm. might be like a turning point in something life, and you don't think you would never think that happens, and then someone says it, and you're just like, "Well, they've never told you before." And then, yeah, twelve years later, they say, "Oh, that day changed my life because of, because of you riding yeah. the bike." And that's quite special. Yeah, 
Yeah, well, I'll be going a little bit longer than that. You can't see, but... Um, be on overtime, won't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, I'm sure Alan needs to sort you out. But, um, <laughs> yeah, that's but, good. Yeah, thanks for coming in, guys, and, uh, yeah, best of luck tomorrow, and we'll see you for the rest of the year. Thank you very much. Thank Cheers. You. Thank you very much. Stuff. Like and subscribe, eh, Tom? Yeah. yeah, like and subscribe. See you in a bit. <laughs> <laughs>